And welcome back to Your Rejoin 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina that I think that you should know. And today we're going to be talking about another logical fallacy. This time, the genetic fallacy. So apparently, the term genetic fallacy dates to about the 1930s, when the term genetic didn't quite carry the same connotation that we would understand today, i.e. associated with this you know, spiraling uh, or double helix of DNA. Uh, they, science understood basically what genetics uh, were capable of. So this would have been a part way uh, after uh, Mandel and his work uh, in researching um, inheritance, uh, but before the isolation of the double helix uh, and the modern understanding of the DNA. So uh, when you look back on kind of old writings uh, and you see with the word genetic, it's probably closer to this particular definition than uh, the, uh, what you would probably hear it today. Uh, so how this is going to work is the genetic fallacy is judging claims based on who said it rather than the merits of the claim itself. So this is actually really hard not to do in practice. Uh, by default, we're just naturally colored uh, in terms of our perception of other people, our other institutions, whether we like them or don't like them, whether we trust them or don't trust them, we're going to have this kind of precondition uh, or belief about the validity of any particular person or institution before we even hear what it is they have to say. Nevertheless, if you're in an argument and you make a claim or, or your opponent makes a claim, it should be judged based on the merit of the claim itself, not necessarily who it's from. So here's kind of the form, just as we've spoken about the form of fallacies in the past. So it's going to look like Socrates says he's mortal. Socrates is a pagan heathen. Uh, he's definitely not a Christian, uh, and only you know it, this is from the perspective of uh, Christianity. So only Christianity is true, and only Christians are, are correct. Therefore, Socrates is immortal. There's something wrong with this here, which is that it's assuming that even if he's wrong, that he's wrong about everything, and so everything, including basic statements of fact, like saying that he's mortal. Uh, this, this is something that he would probably have said, uh, or at least argued, um, given that he was alive only so long, and in fact ended up taking his own life, as we'll talk about later. So this is something that, um, you know, you, you, there, there's always going to be people that you really strongly disagree with, or that you just don't like, or that you think are really stupid. Maybe people with, you know, tinfoil hats or something. Uh, but nevertheless, occasionally they're going to say true things uh, because it's really hard to build up to things that are completely crazy and full of shit uh, without getting to the point by stepping over uh, true statements. And so the, the fallacy is uh, to discount even those true things that they say without weighing them as, as possibly true. So. The, the question you should be asking is, is it really relevant to appeal to the source of information itself, rather than the merit of the information that they're giving you? And that's the question that you should be asking if you're, you're uh, in the situation where you're discounting something that somebody is saying. So for, for example, uh, if you get a, you know, a fortune cookie, and the fortune cookie says to focus on your education, uh, well, in general, fortune cookies aren't necessarily the greatest source of information, especially for uh, complex topics like uh, what you should do with your life or uh, how fusion works or anything of that sort. And then on the flip side, you could talk to actual uh, experts in the field who've gone through uh, studies of uh, meta-analyses uh, that have actually gone out, gathered evidence, 
done experiments, uh, revised their hypotheses, and, and learn from the whole matter. Perhaps if, if, if it's a matter of what are you supposed to do with your life, you could ask them for judgment and guidance. If it's about physics and fusion, you could ask a physicist, and they could give you a, a pretty good answer. And then somehow there's this kind of spectrum of things in between a expert in a, a domain expert uh, in areas that are addressable by science and a fortune cook. And in those areas, a lot of the times, we're just going to assume that they're closer to the fortune cookie rather than the, the scientist without necessarily uh, judging the claim itself. Uh, this is something we want to caution you. Caution. Pay attention to the claim. Look for the information. See if you can get that particular claim judged on evidence rather than purely appearances. This logical fallacy is related to many other logical fallacies, and in uh, some lists may not even include it uh, by kind of including it in those other fallacies. Uh, for and other videos in general uh, address things related to this in this particular series. Uh, it's related to the, the video on grades. If you, have, if, if you haven't seen any of the other videos in the series, I encourage you to go back. Uh, th this is one of the first ones. Uh, where uh, basically, if you're faced with a situation where uh, you're trying to tell if a student, uh, perhaps younger than you, uh, is knowing what they're talking about, if they don't have very good grades, you should not necessarily discount what they're saying. They're as mentioned in that video. There are reasons why grades don't have to necessarily correlate with understanding of the universe. Uh, and so, it's worth considering, at least, that what they're saying may be true, and that you should check it out, uh, regardless of their grade level. Or perhaps, regardless of what university they're in. Or regardless of whether they've got to university at all. Which brings us to the second video in this series that this particular fallacy is related to, which is, of course, the Great White Combine video. Uh, in particular, uh, you, you have a lot of people who have gone through filters and wound up on the wrong side of filters. And those people may still have decent, uh, well-informed uh, knowledge and information uh, about the universe, in particular about your domain in question. So you should not necessarily discount what they are saying because they happen to be born on the wrong side of the tracks. They, there may be areas that they are wrong, but again, there may be areas that they are right. This video is also related, or this particular fallacy is also related to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 video, if you want to go and watch that one. Uh, there may be different ways of accounting for the same data, different ways of addressing the same hypothesis, di different ways of interpreting, and, and different reference planes that you can view even the information that you have from. Your particular reference plane is not privileged. Your particular perspective is not privileged. There may be other ways of viewing things, and if you merely discount it because of, of who's saying it, you're going to miss the chance to see things from another perspective. It's also related uh, to the argument from authority, uh, in that there's uh, kind of it, it, it's kind of the flip side of the argument from authority. You can either give too much or too little weight. Uh, you can treat someone with uh, kind of no respect and not respect their opinion as possibly being valid. This is also kind of bordering on the argument from incredulity, which is another video. Again, go check it out. And so you may not be able to see how someone in some other class, of, uh, uh, it, it, whether economically or uh, in, in, in some other level in the academic world, some other place in society, and how they may have come across information uh, that you do not necessarily have, which informs their worldview, but does not inform your worldview. And so that's, uh, again, going to be something that's going to cause this fallacy, but it's based in the argument from incredulity. Uh, and then there's at least one other fallacy, which I'm totally blanking on which that this is related to, uh, in that you can observe this particular fallacy a little bit easier if you observe, uh, as a neutral third party, other countries and cultures than your own. Uh, because their environment is going to be separated into tribes, and they're going to split their worldview along tribal or, or in-group and out-group group lines. And so you're going to get to the situation where the people in those particular groups are going to just see the other group as unreliable, regardless of how reliable they actually are. And you may have, as a neutral third party, some ability to kind of see through to both of their perspectives in ways that each individual group and in-group is not able to do. So it, it, it's important to not believe the hype. It's, it's important to judge, especially in, in situations where you're, you're mediated or your knowledge is mediated by some thing or some communication platform or something where 
you can uh, be shown things without basis uh, or told things without basis. You should not necessarily believe those things, but again, you shouldn't necessarily believe uh, the opposite either way, maintaining a skeptical uh, or attempt at being neutral uh, is the way to go in those particular situations. It's important to judge claims based on their future or present value rather than past merit. Uh, if you can get to the point where you know something has proven the case uh, in the past and yet someone has information that may suggest that it may no longer apply in the current uh, situation, then that shouldn't necessarily be ignored. There are, as other logical fallacies, uh, valid situations in which the source uh, may be uh, discounted in practice or in, in when, when you're argue, arguing in general. Uh, the, if, if you're merely basing your information on hearsay or rumor, uh, you may end up going astray. Now, that said, uh, you want to be, the, the reason you're going astray is because the information is not necessarily getting from where things are happening to you. You want to be as close to the, the data as possible. You want to not necessarily have your experience mediated by other people, uh, and in particular, uh, things that where there's incentives to go, uh, where there are incentives for the, the data itself to be biased on its way to you. Uh, so that's not to say that you shouldn't believe, you know, someone if they're saying or telling you a rumor. So much as just be cautious that your what you're dealing with is in fact a rumor, and that you don't have actual hard evidence either way. Uh, and on the flip side of that, occasionally you're going to get access to an expert, and their testimony and their their knowledge should be deemed as credible. Uh, so if you're out in the woods with a woodsman and they tell you not to eat a berry, you probably shouldn't eat that berry because you're going to get sick and they know that you're going to get sick. And there's this kind of direct relationship, unfiltered by biases, between you're not getting sick by eating that berry and you know they're, they're telling you so. So there's this kind of relationship we're keeping in mind that yes, uh, there are different levels of expertise and there are different levels of uh, credibility in terms of people's uh, biases and, and in terms of people's awarenesses of their own biases, in terms of the, the structure of society and the, the ability to transfer knowledge around, but at the same time, claims should be able to stand on their own. And if you ask your you know, local woodsman, why shouldn't I eat this berry? And they say, because you're going to get sick. You, know, you, you may be able to, to kind of take steps in the directions of, of understanding why, you know, doing experiments on the berries, although I wouldn't recommend actually eating them yourself to test it. The third uh, way of kind of discounting uh, sources uh, in a valid way is there are some people that will just habitually lie or that will completely uh, be off the scale no matter what you do. Uh, there, these people are probably far and few between on average, uh, but they do exist. Uh, so this is not to say you shouldn't completely ignore anyone in the world. There's, again, examples that you can kind of look up, but I would express extreme caution by ignoring them outright because they're have been all sorts of mistakes by people who have agreed, otherwise credible people, who just happen to seem crazy, or just happen to seem like they didn't have know what they were talking about. The best example of this is in, uh, I think it was the 90s, uh, there was a gentleman who found out about a very large scale um, corrupt uh, system of trading and insider trading in the stock markets in Europe. Uh, he was accused successfully of being crazy and thrown in a mental institution for a long time. Uh, he ended up being vindicated when the LIBOR scandal uh, reached the front pages of the papers and wound up being released. But for very, very many years, he was imprisoned and uh, drugged up in the whole deal. Very unfortunate. But this is just an example that even someone who you know, looks from all perspectives to be completely crazy uh, may actually have some information that you may want to know. Uh, it's worth uh, considering in the legal system uh, the doctrine of, of the uh, fruit of the poison tree. Uh, now, which, which basically works that if the government or the prosecutor manages to present some information that was obtained in, in an illegal uh, fashion, then anything concluded from that is no longer uh, logically concludable. And so you can, for example, get off some charges because if the only evidence against you was obtained in an illegal way, for example, by use of stingrays, or by use of NSA wiretaps or something, you might be able to get off the hook. Um, and 
you know, you can discount parallel construction if you can prove it. But the, the reason that this is in our legal system uh, is kind of two separate ways. One is that it's just the way we've always done it. Uh, but the other is that not necessarily because we want to, uh, to, to produce truth, uh, especially in the short term, in the, in, in the context of a particular court case, but because there's incentives to commit illegal acts on the government side that we want to avoid. And so it's worth creating this kind of margin of doubt uh, on the side of people's ability to act illegally than it is to live in a completely dystopic state where the government has the ability to just fabricate evidence to get it against everyone. And the legal system in common law countries, by and large, does take the stance that you know the government actually can't just fabricate evidence and does actually have to prove its claims, and that it's worth doing or forcing the government to do so at the expense of some rigor in argument. There's another example uh, where, uh, I guess, knowledge uh, is discounted based on where it comes from, and that is, of course, uh, knowledge given by torture. Uh, torture is another example where the, the in there are perverse incentives created when we accept information gained from torture that actually can be argued uh, outweigh the, the benefit of knowing the information itself. Uh, so we don't want a government that is willing to torture people. No matter how valuable the information obtainable by torture is, it's worth living in a world without governments that torture people for their political beliefs, etc. What are some examples of this? Uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, Kukuli uh, dis discovered benzene, uh, which is a chemical that kind of looks like a... I think it looks something like that, but, but it's basically a loop. Um, and he discovered in his dream. Uh, now, dreams are not very good sources of credible scientific ideas. If you uh, have a dream and you dream of something uh, and write it down, I encourage you to do this. It's a very uh, fun thing to do and very uh, informational, uh, informs my worldview in so many ways. But uh, it, it, it's in general not a good source of ideas because you'll find out that your, your subconscious generates all this random nonsense. And this could very easily have been one of those instances where it's not actually a valid uh, particular piece of information. However, in this case it was. This is, uh, or, or at least what he came up with was the correct formula for benzene, and it was the key to coming up with it was the dream that he had. But the important thing is not necessarily that he dreamed it, although that certainly helped him coming up with the, the hypothesis testing uh, apparatus and the directing his, his, his kind of short-term short -term activity. Um, the important thing is that he tested it, and he, he used science and actually verified uh, what he was going to otherwise believe, he, without just taking it from his dream and accepting it. This is what you should be doing instead of just judging people uh, and judging things that they say based on who they are. You should test things and verify. You know, trust but verify. Go go out and see if you can uh, prove one way or the other or find supporting evidence one way or the other rather than just take or not take things that people say. Uh, another example is the reductio ad Hitlerium, uh, kind of modern logical fallacy which is the um, kind of if, if, if your opponent reduces their argument to, you know, you're Hitler, uh, well, then they're not really arguing in good faith and can be kind of discounted. But again, it's, it's th there are going to be a lot of different political entities that draw some inspiration from the similar sources that the Nazis and Hitler did. Not all of them are completely full of bullshit. Uh, of course, a lot of them are, but again, not all of them, and their claims should be weighted again, based on whether or not they're credible. The uh, social facts work a little bit differently with the genetic fallacy. Uh, there are uh, going to be situations where uh, things that are true by nature of their being believed uh, can be influenced by who actually says them. You know, if the Pope says Christians should do X, then the Pope can actually influence whether Christians should do X. Uh, based mostly on how the church actually works. And so you can get into the situation where this may or may not apply in certain contexts if they're dealing with social facts. Also worth noting is Bayesians have a little bit more subtle way of dealing with this particular kind of problem that warrants this being a logical fallacy. 
if you're discussing something with an, a Bayesian or arguing with a Bayesian or even a Bayesian wannabe, be wary of this. We'll talk about that later when we get to Bayes, uh, but it's worth noting that this is there, there may be kind of ways around it. What are some more examples of this? Uh, oral tradition. Uh, I've come across someone who uh, comes from India and had an oral tradition uh, specifically about women and how they should be barefoot and or bare, barefoot and pregnant all the time, at least according to his father and his forefather and his forefather, going kind of all the way back thousands of years in a fairly traceable way. Now, it's worth pointing that not everything that comes from oral tradition is wrong. There's a lot of good advice, a lot of ability to survive in the wilderness that has successfully been passed down father to son, father to son, and for thousands of years in many parts of the world. But nevertheless, uh, in this particular case, it's kind of a, a good example that uh, perhaps this oral tradition is not optimal. There may be better ways of organizing our society than just regulating women to being you know, second-class citizens that only have you know, breeding as their goal. Uh, this is, we can do better than that. And if we only stick on oral tradition, we'll get stuck in these kind of local optimas uh, that don't allow us to, to gain the benefit uh, of a, that the kind of modern uh, Western society would perhaps allow. And it is, again, uh, worth calling into question oral tradition, uh, but not necessarily discounting it uh, without looking at the evidence of what are the actual impacts of that particular piece of advice. Here's another example, quote, I was brought up to believe in God. My parents told me God exists, so he must exist. Well, again, there, I mean, a lot of parents tell their kids that Santa Claus exists as well, and so it doesn't necessarily mean that that particular thing exists. But again, if you, you want to evaluate that particular claim that God exists, independent of your particular uh, authority that gives it to you. So if, it, it, if there is such a thing as God, and that God does exist, you should be able to verify it through other means. Uh, here's an, a, a more modern, or a more uh, kind of a recent example. Uh, Senator Patrick Brazo, if I'm pronounc pronouncing that right, uh, recently wrote a, a letter about Harper, uh, our Prime Minister here in Canada, and uh, made claims that Harper manipulates the guilt and innocence, uh, or at least the perception of guilt and innocence of people uh, in his kind of nearby regions uh, for his own political gain. Now, again, th this is something that you may otherwise discount uh, because of who is saying it. This, is, this person is one of the people who either A, is guilty of some heinous crime, or B, has been shown to be guilty by some kind of politicized apparatus. We don't know because he hasn't actually gone to court yet, regardless. Uh, it may seem at first blush that you're, you know, you shouldn't pay attention to him because he's discredited. But that would be committing the genetic fallacy. That would be associating with his particular claims no validity based purely on who he is and not anything about the claims themselves. It may very well be true that this is something that Harper does. It certainly uh, rhymes with a lot of his actions. Uh, here's some other examples. Uh, should we disbelieve the Book of Mormon because Joseph Smith was a convicted fraud who was literally tarred and feathered uh, for trying to hoodwink people? Uh, I mean, he did. should we completely ignore him? No, we probably shouldn't. And they shouldn't have then, and they didn't then. People tried to or verify his claims. People have tried to look for evidence uh, in the uh, distribution of genetic... Uh, the, 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 the I guess, di distribution of genes uh, across North America and have not found evidence for his claims. Should we have completely ignored him? No, but at the same time, we, 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 we go out, we find information that either supports or does not support his claims. In this case, they don't particularly, su don't particularly support his claims. The, the respect of elders, what, and, and the perception that elders necessarily you know, know more and, and that their knowledge should be kind of sacrosanct. Uh, again, is another example where you're privileging information from people without necessarily weighing the merit of the people themselves. Which again is very similar to the uh, uh, argument from authority, uh, but in this particular example it can go either way. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, don't necessarily write off people, even 
people you disagree with, even people who are members of groups who you don't like, purely because of their memberships in those groups or your disagreement with them on other topics. If it's new information, try to learn from it. Try to see the basis of their belief. Try to see why they understand or believe what it is they want to believe. If you can't find this information, uh, don't completely write them off, uh, purely because you do not have access to the information that informs their belief, as you do with the information that informs your belief. So this has been yet another logical fallacy. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? No questions today? Okay. Well, uh, as other uh, videos, um, there should be a little donation uh, Bitcoin address in the bottom somewhere that uh, will definitely support our getting dry erase pens so we can show up clearly on this nice board in the background. And uh, if you uh, have any questions or would like to uh, call into question my legitimacy as, as far as someone who knows anything about the world, uh, feel free to leave comments to that effect anywhere where this uh, video is posted. And uh, we will continue next week with probably yet another logical fallacy. Uh, talk to you then. See you in the next video.